In today's video, we're going to have a look at creating HTML tables. Now, this is a new technique for us, so we're going to start fairly simple. As you can see on your page here, we've just got a little bit of text and a table in the middle. And that table shows some student grades from their assignments. And down the bottom, we've got an email link, which we have done in previous tutorials. So, a fairly simple web page to get started with. We will expand on this in future tutorials and make these um, tables a little bit more complex, but for now, we'll just learn the basics. We are going to begin today by making ourselves a new folder called Lesson 5 Grades. Inside that folder, you can include an images folder for good practice, but we aren't using any pictures in this web page, as you just saw, so you don't need an images folder today. So, all we need is a Lesson 5 Grades folder. Once you've got that created, you can open up brackets and make yourself a brand new document. Before we type up any code, you can save this page. So I'll just go into my account and find that Lesson 5 folder grades. And I'm going to call this one, I'll just call it grades.html. Don't forget the .html on the end to remind the computer that we are making a web page. Okay, once we've got this created, you can start your coding. So at the top. Let's put in our doc type tag and tell the computer we are creating a HTML file. Below that, we're going to make ourselves the HTML tags and we will create the head section. Inside the head section, we are going to have a title tag like usual and this one's going to say year 10 class grades. Okay, and that will be all that we put in our head section for now. We are going to add something new a little bit later on. We're going to add some more inside that head section. But for now, let's get the body set up. We'll get the writing in that we need and get this table sorted. So inside our first body tag, okay, we're going to start by putting in a big H1 heading. That H1 heading is going to say Year 10 Grades. Okay, if I just press Control S and save this page, I'm going to go over to my folder, open up the grades.html file, and you can see we've got Year 10 Grades as a H1 heading on our page. We've also got Year 10 Class Grades in our tab at the top there. Okay, so back into brackets, we'll keep going on this web page. On the next line, we're going to put in a new paragraph. And on that paragraph, it will say below are a breakdown of grades from students in the Year 10 IPR class. Probably should say below is a breakdown of grades from students in the year 10 IPR class. Okay, so I'll save that, pop over to Google Chrome and refresh it, and you can see we've got a new sentence in, in a new paragraph. So far so good. So now comes the table. Okay, it's not too hard to make a table in HTML. First thing you want to do is write the word table in um, its own tag. Okay, so we've opened up a table tag. Inside that table, we add our data row by row. Okay, so to make a row in our table, or the first row of the table, we just put in a tag that says TR. And what that's going to do is create a row in our table. Now, if we just go back and have a look at the example, this is the first row of our table running along here. It's the headings for each column. Okay, so we've got four of those. So what we do inside the TR tags, as this is the heading row, we're going to put in a table heading or a TH tag. And I'm going to copy that. I'll just highlight it, press Control C, and I'm going to paste it another three times. So in total, we've got four headings. Okay, and if I go back to the example page, I said before we have four headings. We've got name, assignment one, assignment two, and overall grade. So what I'm going to do now, inside these TH tags, I'm going to write name inside the first one there. In the next TH tag there, I'm going to write assignment 1. In the next one, I'll do assignment 2. In the last one, I'll write overall grade. So that there is the first row of our table. So you can see the TR tags. Inside the first row, we've got four headings, which basically means four columns. Got name, assignment one, assignment two, and overall grade. I'm going to save that now and go and preview how this is going to look. Okay, so there they are. Can't see the table yet because we don't have a border around it, but we have got a table there with four columns in it, just one row at the moment. Okay, so if we want to add another row to this table, 
There's our first one. We need to go below that TR and just add in another TR tag. Now this time, we're not putting the headings in. If we look at the example, we're putting in the first line of proper text. So we've got Aiden here with a few of his grades. So what we're going to do now, inside table row, we're going to add a TD tag, which stands for table data. It's no longer a heading um, row, so it's just normal data that goes into the table now. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste that tag there, the TD tags, four times, so that makes four columns in that row. And we're just going to do Aiden. So Aiden comes first. His first grade can be a B, second grade can be a C, and his overall grade can be a C. Okay. So I'm going to press Control S, and I'm going to show you this next row in the table. So this should come straight below our headings. Let's have a look. So we'll go back to the one we're working on. There we go. So straight below the name we've got Aiden, assignment 1, he's got a B, assignment 2, a C, overall grade a C. The alignment's pretty bad at the moment. Okay, we are going to fix that up. But before we do fix that alignment issue, we are going to put the rest of the information into the table. So let's go back to brackets. What we're going to do below this table row, where we've got Aiden's name, we're going to insert another table row. So a new TR tag. Inside TR, it's basically a copy and paste job again for those TD tags. And what we're going to add in this time is Grace. So in the first TD tag, or the first column, we put in Grace. Her assignment 1 mark comes second, assignment 2, and then her overall grade. That will add a second row to our table, so I'll save that. Go and preview it. Now we've got Grace in the second row of our table here. Okay, so let's go back to brackets. And let's just add the last two rows in. Okay, so I'm going to add in another TR. In between those TR tags, I'll whoops, copy and paste in the TDs. In this one, we've got Liana. Okay, so Liana's got herself a D, an E, and a D overall. And in the very last table row, so add in one last set of TR tags, add in the TDs, we've got Riley. Okay, and Riley's got straight A's for himself, so A, A, and A. Okay, so that's basically the end of our table. So we've got our closing table tag there. And I'm just going to save that. And we'll go and test it. And we'll see how our table's looking. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Looks ugly, but it has got all the information we need in our table to start with. And we're going to style that up shortly using some CSS code. Before we do that, though, just below the table, we need to add in one last sentence. So let's... Make a new P tag for a paragraph, and we're going to write to speak to your teacher about your grades. Email him at, and we're just going to make up an email address, teacher at eq.edu.au. Now we want to turn that part, so the teacher at eq.edu.au, into a mail or a mail hyperlink. So what we're going to do. We're going to put in some tags. So right before the word teacher, we're going to write ahref equals, and we're going to write mail to, colon. I'm just going to write that email address again. So teacher at eq.edu.au, close the quotation marks, close the bracket off. Now this little closing tag, the A closing tag, needs to be removed. So delete it, and put it after this email address here, so just before the closing P tag. That way, that section there is going to be the hyperlink. It's going to be the mail link. So it allows us to email our teacher. I'll save that up by pressing Control S. I'll go back to the internet and have a look at our final paragraph there to speak to your teacher about your grades, email him out. And as I hover over that, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner down here that it's going to mail to that email account. Okay, so we've got all the information in our page now. It's just a matter of styling it up to make it look good. Now, the first thing I want to do is put a border around this table so we can see the rows and columns. So back up the top of my um, code here, we've got this table tag. It's on row 11 for me, so it should be around row 11 for you, somewhere near there. Inside that tag, I'm going to put a space after the word table and write border equals, and in quotation marks, write 1. And if I save that and go and test it, you'll see that we get a border, quite an ugly border, around our table. 
Okay, but we are going to make that look a little bit better with some more styling. Okay, so now it's time to put some CSS styling into our page. And I'm going to do a little bit different to what we've done in the past. Okay, in the past we've just gone inside tags, for example this TR tag here, and we've written style equals, and we've gone on and styled up that row in the table. When you've got big websites, there is a much quicker way to do it. So instead of styling each row of the table individually, we can do it all in one hit at the top of our page, inside the head section. I did say earlier that we're going to come back to the head section, so what I'm going to do is go just below the title tags. And I'm going to add in some style tags. Okay, so here's something new that we haven't seen before. Inside the style tags is where we can put our CSS coding to style up our page, to add in colors and things like that. So the first thing I want to style up in my web page is the body section. Okay, so that's basically going to affect everything in the page. So I'm going to write the word body. Go down to the next line and open a curly brace. Below that, I'm going to go down another line and I'm going to close the curly brace. Okay, so whatever I put inside these curly braces now is going to affect how the body looks in my web page. Okay, so I'm going to go in between those curly braces onto a new line and I'm going to adjust the font family. You remember this from previous tutorials. Font family, and I'm going to choose sans serif. And at the end I'm going to put a semicolon. So that little section of code there inside the style tags has just styled up my body for me. So instead of having that ugly serif font, I've now got my font family set to sans serif. And if I save this and go and refresh my page, you'll notice that my font changes to a sans serif font. Okay, it hasn't got those little curly feet on the end of each letter. That okay, looks pretty good. One more thing I might do to this body is give it a background color. So I'm going to start writing in background color. And the color I might choose is azure. Okay, brackets will let you um, choose a preset color there. If you can't see that, just type in any code or any color you should uh, wish, to, wish to use. And if I save that, Go and test it. You see that I've got this light blue color that's just appeared in the background of my page. So it's looking better already. Now that's the body styled up. What I want to do now is style up my table, okay, without affecting anything else. So what I'm going to do is go down and I'm going to write the word table inside my style tags. On the next line, I'll open a curly brace. I'll go down and close the curly brace. Okay, so whatever comes inside these curly braces now is going to affect how the table looks. So on a new line in between those curly braces, what we're going to do is change the width of our table to 50%. Okay, and when we save that, you'll notice that it changes the width of our table to 50% of the web browser. So 50% of the size of the web browser. Okay, fairly straightforward. A couple of other things that we want to do to our table. We're going to remove that ugly border by going to border collapse and we're going to collapse that border. Don't forget to put a semicolon at the end of each line in your style styling section here. So as I say that now you'll notice that this ugly border will disappear just down to a nice thin line which looks a lot neater. Okay, so the table's starting to look really good now. One other thing I might do is change the colour of my table, so I'm going to change the background colour of it. Oops. And I'm just going to choose a whitish color. I think down the bottom of this preset list we've got floral white. So I'm going to choose floral white as my color and put a semicolon at the end. That's basically my table styled up, so let's have a look at it. Okay, it's not quite white, but it's just that off-white color. It just makes it pop out from the blue background. It looks quite nice. Um, the other thing I might do is just get these grades center aligned so they match the headings above them. So what I'm going to do now below the table section, so that's the table section, I'm going to go below that, but still inside my style tags, I'm going to style up the TD section. So every time TD appears in my code, it's going to style up any text that comes inside those tags. And all we want to do, I'm just going to open and close some brackets there, some curly braces. I'm just going to text align and have it as center, with a semicolon at the end. And that little piece of coding there will align any text inside the table that comes inside these TD brackets, so all this sort of stuff 
will be aligned in the center. It saves me having to write it time and time again down in the main part of the code. So let's have a look. I'll refresh that and you can see all my text now. Every time there was a TD tag, it has been centered. So that's basically it. That's our first look at HTML tables. Fairly simple once you know how to use them. We're going to create a few of these in the next few tutorials just so you can get the hang of using tables. We're going to have a look at making them look a lot nicer than this one as well. Okay, so that's our code. Make sure you've got something fairly similar to that so that it's working. And don't forget this styling section at the top that we've done. We're going to use that a bit more in future tutorials as well. Okay, it's a more professional way of writing up our CSS code or our styling in our web page. Alrighty, so save that when you're done and you're finished.